Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our next installment of PNC in Practice featuring Justine Highsmith and Adam Sarezi. In addition to highlighting their time at PNCA and the ways in which they connect with the community, we're also sp spotlighting their creative pathways. My name is Sarah Cohen. I'm the Assistant Director of Arts Alumni Community Engagement for both PNCA and Willamette University. This even evening's conversation will focus on our speakers' community and PNCA experiences with and within the arts. So we're gonna do a little bit talking about each of our speakers' works and the bios that they provided for us. Starting with Justine, through the mediums of photography, bookmaking, and electronic music composition, Justine Highsmith creates work and perception and the vulnerability of time. Highsmith earned her BFA in Intermedia 2017 at the Pacific Northwest College of Art. She is exhibited at the International Print Center in New York, Blue Sky Gallery, Well Well, and Carnation Contemporary. She has also performed at PICA TBA 2019 with Mia Habib for the all exhibition of Physical Poem of Protest, the Center for Contemporary Art and Culture, Extradition Series, Performance Works, Northwest, the Holocene, and other interdisciplinary art institutions. Highsmith was the recipient of an Ipsen Y course award in 2021, Center for Book Arts Publishing Seminar, and the Andy Warhol Foundation for the Arts Grant via Pika Precipice Fund 2015 to 2016 and 2019 to 2020 for a collaborative publication series highlighting artists writing on the themes of labor. She's the co-founder of Matt Ora Press, which prints newspapers, maps, and ephemera reporting on the untold thoughts and feelings of the natural world. Adam Brox Rezzi is a New York-born multidisciplinary artist residing in Portland, Oregon since 2007. Adam's background is in the visual art, painting, mixed media, music, and production. Also a street artist, Adam has made dozens of murals throughout Portland, many of them collaborative and based on socially engaged histories relative to the places they are created in. Adam is the founder of an alternative education program called Street Ed contracting with Portland Public High Schools, sharing opportunities with students to collectively make art and public murals. Some of Adam's studio work focuses on living with the chronic autoimmune disorder, ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease, relating connections of the debilitating condition to exploitive industries and socioeconomic systems. Other bodies of artwork include intersections, environmentalism, political discontent, growth, and healing. As a musician and producer, Adam has released over a dozen records since the early 2000s and is currently active in multiple bands spanning genres such as Indian punk. Adam received a BFA in art practices from Portland State University and an MFA in visual studies from Pacific Northwest College of Art. Justine, Adam, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to learn about your experience at the college so far and what you've done professionally as well with your practices. Thank Thanks so much for having me and having us. Yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. hey, thank you. So as he said, we're going to be talking about your kind of careers, your education, what has kind of evolved since then. And we're first going to start with Justine and then go to Adam before we talk about some questions for the Q&A session that are related to both of our speakers. So Justine, as we shared, you work in admissions and you help students with the journey for like navigating what they're doing in the arts, especially their pathways in the academics as art students. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey at PNCA and how your current role has been developing? Yeah, um, thanks. That's a great question. So I, how I got to PNCA, um, I'll try to make that short because it's a long story. <laughs> I was a transfer student into PNCA. Um, so working with transfer students at PNCA right now uh, really means a lot to me because I've been in their shoes. Um, when I graduated from high school, um, I needed some time before going into college, but I always knew I wanted to go to art school. Um, so PNCA was a really big dream of mine. Um, and then I finally found my way after transferring, you know, doing some community college and having some more life experience. Um, so I was what you called a non-traditional art student. Um, I kind of started out in my uh, mid-20s at PNCA to get my BFA. And it was a really incredible experience for me. 
um, after my time at PNCA, I majored in the intermedia department. Um, that's where I got my BFA. Um, I actually moved to Los Angeles <laughs> and decided that I wanted to have some time um, working there, um, getting some experience in a different um, city. Um, and there were lots of opportunities for me there, much of which took place because I did my internship at the Portland Art Museum while I was a student at PNCA. An internship really gave me um, a pathway into working with museums, which I did pretty extensively before coming into this role as an admissions counselor at PNCA. Um, while I was in LA, I worked at um, a kindergarten uh, school, <laughs> like a kindergarten class and elementary school in East LA in a really rough area that um, really opened my eyes. It changed so much for me about how much I loved connecting um, you know, with children at that time. And I created this whole kind of experimental art program for five-year-olds <laughs> based off of local artists based in LA. And um, I was allowed to do that um, there at this charter school. It was amazing. Um, kind of cut my teaching chops there. And then I started um, working in art education for various museums and finally, that led me to working um, at LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. But I worked behind the scenes in that role instead of with the public. I worked more with art objects. Um, so I worked in their permanent collection um, as an assistant to the registrar. Really interesting work, working with curators, um, helping to accession works that were being purchased by the museum. I got to touch a lot of amazing artwork, um, you know, do lots of cool academic writing about it, um, as well as like descriptive writing. All Everything that I had done at PNCA really like prepared me for all of this. Um, and then I got tired of LA, <laughs> like many folks do. <laughs> Um, when they're down there, sometimes you get tired of the grind. And I came back to Portland in 2019, and I really wanted to also get back into my art career out here. Um, I, I personally have found that the Pacific Northwest and this whole region has been extremely um, accommodating and like really opening doors for me, not only when I was a student, but as an artist in ways that um, some other larger cities just I, did not afforded me. You know, I had a lot of great connections here that I wanted to continue building. So I moved back to Portland, um, started doing more um, art practices, both collaborative. Um, you know, I did that performance at TBA with Mia Habib. Um, I got a grant through PICA, the Precipice Fund, and worked on this big collaborative publication project because I do a lot of book arts work as well. Um, and then I found my way into working at PNCA um, as an admissions counselor, which has been a really amazing role for me because it involves everything that I'm interested in and have studied and have kind of done professionally, both in the arts and as an artist. Um, I get to help students through the application process to PNCA, get to guide them through that. Um, I get to review their artwork, which is such an honor. Um, and I just get to kind of help them through that time, that transition time into coming into the school and becoming a student. Um, and then I get to see them as current students throughout the years, which is one of the best parts of my position. But kind of how I got <laughs> my, my road to PNCA and where I'm at now in my role, which I've been in for um, just about two years now. Congratulations. I mean, it's really exciting to hear everything that you've done and the places it's taken you and just really fun to know that you've already had this super education basis kind of in your personal development and your career and that you've gotten to really utilize that in interacting with the students, whether they're prospective students, whether they're current students, and helping them in these very interesting ways by picking up this knowledge along the way, especially, I mean, 
talking about your kindergarten experience with that charter school, that's so unique and interesting. I have never really heard of anything like that myself. So thank you for kind of I made it. That. I like invented it. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was there, I was like, you don't have an art program here. And I was like, how do you, how would you feel if I came in and, um, you know, showed you what that could look like with your students and, I feel that um, if you can work with five-year-olds, you can work with any age. And (laughs) um, I actually personally love working with high school students. Like I just, that age is amazing. Um, And there are some very funny similarities from my previous teaching experiences, but they're, they're awesome. Like it's, also a big part of my job is working with, with like students who are still in high school, um, as well as like, you know, transfer students, but a lot of them are, you know, they're still in high school. Um, and I just, I like love that period of time in, in life. That's great. And I think it's a good way of putting it. If you can work with five-year-olds, you can work with anyone of any age as well. (laughs) So in a similar way, you kind of highlighted it already, but is there anything in particular that makes you super excited about your work or just kind of in general, the excitement of your work? Yeah. Um, I mean, reviewing art portfolios and offering guidance to students, um, about their work is extremely rewarding as an artist and just in this role. Um, but my absolute favorite aspect is just like meeting with students, building that relationship, um, getting them excited about this time in their life when they're going to be going to college, they'll be going to art school, offering um, everything from like guidance on the application to just general life advice and like support for students. And that's the part that I really, really deeply love, like making those connections um, And then when I see them in their classes, like semester after semester and seeing them flourish is really cool. That's great to hear. And because we are probably going to have some people watching this after tonight's session, could you talk a little bit more about what a portfolio is, especially for people who aren't as familiar with that with art schools or just in general with the arts? Yeah. um, So a portfolio is like a collection of work that represents you as an artist um, generally defined as like your best work, mediums you enjoy working with, um, you know, concepts that you're interested in. And for, you know, for PNCA, I get to review um, student work and help them um, create their portfolio submission to get into the school. Um, and sometimes I also work with transfer students regarding a specific major they might want to go into and helping them develop a portfolio that really showcases that interest in those talents. Um, and a portfolio is not just for art school portfolio is kind of, you'll do this over and over and over again as an artist for the rest of your life. You're always kind of taking a look at your work, your body of work that you've made maybe in the last two years, selecting the pieces that really best represent you um, and then, you know, showcasing that and your work will change year after year um, as your interests change and as you grow as an, and develop as an artist. I I totally relate to that myself as somebody who's also in the earlier parts of their artistic career of like how much your work just changes, even if it's six months or a year or five years, for instance, and just maybe what type of mediums you explore into, like, you know, you never know what you end up in. And there's always new technologies being developed, especially for the digital arts that we're starting to see more and more common. And there are a lot more opportunities with it as well. And since you have such a strong connection with the students in the transformative process of being a part of PNCA, are there any like fun stories that you have that have happened along the way or either with a student or from an admission event. Just I'm trying to think about what I can share. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Whatever you can share. Admissions is wild. It's really fun. It's hilarious. Um, it's so rewarding on so many levels. I, um, I think lately what has been just so cool is that um last semester, you know, a whole, you work with students usually for a whole year. It's like a whole year experience. And then to see them 
these past couple semesters, like when I'm in the glass building, I'll see them in there or like, um, you know, when I'm just walking around and like getting to stop and chat with them and talk to them about their classes and seeing them make amazing work. Um, and I don't know if some of my best moments have been like, I mean, some, some of my students are, are, you know, are like friends, like they're just really cool folks and making great work. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's been something that's been really interesting and cool about, um, this position as well. That's really awesome. Especially since you have such a unique, I shouldn't say unique, but creative relationship within the creativeness that's getting developed at the institution. And it's fun to hear that you think of them as your friends along the way and that you get to go in and see how they're developing firsthand, especially since you've seen the start of it and ultimately see the end of it and beyond after they graduate from the institution. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, and then, uh, also seeing them experiment with like new um, techniques and different um, ways in which they're pushing themselves at the school that, you know, I knew them before they became students at PNCA and they might've been nervous about certain materials. And now you just see them going wild. Like it's, it's wonderful. That's awesome. And so now not to cut this conversation short and the excitement of it, now we're going to switch over to Adam for a little bit and, Talk about their experience as well. And in particular, um, Adam, you're a community education and foundations ex- instructor at the college. So you're providing opportunities to people who are not only in the external community that's affiliated with PNCA, but also the internal community as well with the current students. Can you tell us about your journey and your current roles in your instructor positions? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I'll try to give a the brief journey, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I I mean, having come from New York, uh, you know, I grew up for one in like a lot of music scenes. Of course, as you mentioned in the bio, I've been playing music um, since I'm, you know, even before I was a teenager, and uh, you know, being growing up in the '90s in New York, I was such a golden age of street art around there and it had always been really drawn to that uh getting to go to the city you know it's still like a memory that i could i have driving down like i think it was the fdr and you know you'd be going by like the crack is whack mural by keith herring and you know that and then like i'd be at home watching the news of my dad or like on sundays what was that i think it's like good good morning america like the sunday edition or something like that and then seeing that mural on there and realizing like oh that's the artist and like seeing it was this really cool young guy was really inspiring to me. And then when I moved here in 2006, it was like kind of a culture shock because at that time when I moved here, there was no, there was not much street art. I mean, there'd be a little bit of graffiti, but that was about it. And the few murals that were here, like, were like kind of kitschy a little. I mean, I want to say there's some murals that, that, that are dear to me that were around here, but um, it was far and few between. And that was always very surprising to me because I moved here being told that this was like a very, uh, you know, a city rich with with art culture and I was like well it's definitely not around the streets as much as it is you know like in galleries and so forth and um I went to PSU I did the thing where I went to PCC first uh I went back to school here went to PCC transferred to PSU and it was funny I was actually studying like international politics and uh one day I was just like this is not what I, I I'm not paying attention in class. I'm like drawing all the time, <laughs> not like doing what I, what I should be doing in class. So I literally like walked out of a class, you know, two years into pro in, into the program and um, switched to art. And, and they were really awesome at PSU and really gave me an opportunity to uh, develop my studio practice while also introducing some of what I was really interested with in street art Um did some really cool projects then for my thesis and my, while well, I was a BFA student there, like uh, doing stop motion work that would be like wheat pasting each frame of an animation around the city and slowly taking pictures over a year is like almost 300 frames I got to put together with that. And 
got a few murals, almost got arrested at PSU for doing a mural there that I did that I thought was approved and it wasn't. But then it got to pave the way for other people, for other BFA students to paint over that wall in the future. And I actually think that is probably a perfect example of like what I've done with my life as an artist is uh, I feel like I sometimes toe the line of legality a little bit, um, but then it opens eyes. So for instance, I then, I, I, I did that, graduated in 2013 at PSU, spent a few years just kind of like not in the academic game, came back to PNCA to do my master's in 2015. 2017, I graduated, I had an amazing experience too. I had a fantastic cohort. I feel like half my cohort are all now like, you know, running departments at PNCA and they're like teachers in my department, other departments that I've taught in, um, such supportive people. And, uh, and I remember that first summer after I graduated from the MFA program in 2017, I was asked to do mural out in St. John's on a house. And, um, I was really excited about it. And I had to tell them that, you know, I'm excited, but it's actually illegal to paint a mural on a house in Portland. You actually cannot paint murals on homes in Portland. Um, it has to be over five dwelling units. So like, for instance, any like big apartment complex, especially a lot of the more like high rise condos that we've been seeing around, totally fair game, single family home, double family home is literally illegal. And I mean, that kind of goes back to like some other stuff that happened in the city uh, with like advertising clear channel had this big thing in the city a couple decades ago. Um, so anyway, uh, turned out the people that were commissioning the mural, they had just moved to St. John's. They were a family they had two children. They're like, we live in this big, huge vinyl sided house. And we feel like we're representing a different class of people than we actually are. And so we want to offer up the side of our house as a way to celebrate the St. John's community. And I was like, you know, that's totally my forte, exactly what I love doing with mural work. I let them know about the possibility of, you know, we can't really get a permit for it. And they're like, well, we're public defenders. No big deal. Don't worry about it. So I painted the mural and then lo and behold, uh, uh, actually I went through the process of actually going around the whole the, the whole neighborhood and giving the petition that like you would actually formally do to get signed. Um, and everyone was totally down with it. And then it turned out some neighbor was not happy with it. And halfway through the process, complained to the city. Next thing you know, it's like all the news stations coming out. The city wants to remove the mural. Then I have like state commissioners calling me and saying like, hey, we really support what you're doing. We're going to not let the city paint it over or stop the process. We want to see it finished. The big shout out to Chloe Udaly was like a huge uh, proponent within that um, for helping us finish it. And I remember, you know, just kind of be, still being in touch with PNCA and the community education department. And I had just like, we, we, I don't even know how I ended up talking with them, but they were like, hey, we had just seen that you were all over the news. Like it was kind of like any publicity is good publicity kind of thing, you know? you know, like, how can we support you? And I was like, you know, well, there's no, like, I, I've never been at, I've never been at a college that offers up an opportunity for like mural painting, like some kind of mural painting class. And they're like, well, let's do it. And gave me the, like, you know, the, the grounds to just start a mural program. And it uh, was like a dream come true. You know, I mean, it's an incredible amount of work, but um, so 2018 spring, we were able to pull it off and it was a really successful project. Uh, and then we continued to do it since for years up until, of course, the pandemic. And then um, that had to stop. And then when that stopped, they were like, well, we would love to have you teach some other classes. And so I started teaching some like, you know, drawing, painting classes. And at that point, it's like Zoom format kind of thing, you know, and and. You know, something that I've really, I, I'm like a classically trained, like I am a tra classically trained uh, painter, especially. Um, I have come from a family of artists, especially uh, my uncle is an art teacher and a really, really amazing artist. And so I learned a lot of like the more formal side of painting. And I was, and they asked me, you know, would you like to teach color theory? And I'm like, that's something that's dear to my heart. So of course, and then through my journey with it, I realized how little I actually knew about color theory and what little is actually taught within institutions and how wrong it's taught. And so I got to create this class that just 
has done really well. I mean, there's been times where we've maxed out with students in that. And um, to the point where actually this last term, there's some students had requested if I could create like a color theory two class because they were enjoying it so much. So we did. And that went really well this, this past term. Um, and then I was just really fortunate that I was given the opportunity this year to start teaching in foundations and teach a 2D design class. So I've gotten to do that now. And um, yeah, just like PNCA has just been really, really good to me. It's just really, I've had a, an incredible experience in the MFA program. Like I said, my cohort, the people who were my mentors and running at that point. Um, and then where I'm at now and the opportunities I've had for classes at the moment, future classes and, and giving me so much agency to create these classes like of my own design that I do through rigorous research. And has just really gotten a lot of great feedback from students. So that's a, the short of it, I would say. And I would say for like prior to when I first moved here in 2006, prior to like Graduate from my BFA, I was getting the opportunity to do a lot of murals around the city. I um, started showing artwork around some small, small cafes, and just the right person at the right place found my artwork, bought it up, and then offered me the opportunity to do a mural at one location. And then a mural is like inadvertent advertising, you know? And so it's just like just snowballed from there. Um, and so I gained a lot of experience just through like putting myself out there in the world. And it just, just things, stars aligned. I love that phrase, stars align. It makes so yeah. much sense. I, I love how your your journey from East Coast to West Coast, which I can relate. I'm a Pennsylvania native that now moved out to Oregon oh, a couple cool. of years back. Where in uh, Pennsylvania, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Central Pennsylvania, right? Uh, close to Harrisburg, about an hour out. And oh, cool. for all of you that now know that too. Um, <laughs> but it, it's just great to hear the journey. I'm imagining the parts of New York that I've seen the street art in as well. And just learning so much about your experience in learning so much along the way and how you went from PCC to PSU to PNCA and in the community as well. I know I learned something with the fact that it's illegal to have a mural if it's under five unit dwellings. That's shocking to a certain degree at the same time. Um, and just how excited the students are to be working with you as well in the foundations class and how the community education side has flourished as well. And we also had a question come in while you were talking, um, yeah. asking, how do you help students and other creatives navigate limitations and restrictions around community-centered and situated public art? Or is that something that might come up in the future? Can you, can re, can you repeat that question one more time? Yeah, of course. So the first part is, how do you help students and other creatives navigate limitations and restrictions around community-centered and situated public art? And then the second half is essentially asking if that's not going on, is that something that might come up in the future? Yeah, sure. So that's actually a really good question. So there's two aspects of it. There's one that kind of relates to the PNCA community side. Um, and you mentioned also earlier in the introduction, I have a street art program. It's like a, it's called street ed. And it's almost like a counterbalance to academic education. So seeing street education as a way to empower, especially I work with youth and it was fun hearing you talk about how much you enjoy working with high school students, just seeing, cause that's what I've been doing for the last couple of years. And they're amazing, amazing folks to work with. Um, and it's all about, I've learned over the last you know decade or so, uh, the sort of ins and outs of public artwork here in Portland. You know, one amazing, um, I don't want to say institution, but organization that is so supportive for people here is the Regional Arts and Culture Council, RAC. And they have a mural art program. And so in the mural, in the mural um, classes that we do at PNCA and also, also with the street ed program that I do working with Portland Public Schools, high, uh, Portland Public High Schools, um, I walk them through the process of not just learning like how to get a permit. I mean, you can also get a permit through the city as well, but RAC just has so many tools and resources for it. Um, and so we'll literally walk through it. I'll do mock-up um, I'll do, I'll do uh, mock-up proposals. We'll do like literally mock-up a mural for them. Like we'll go take a picture of a building and show them exactly how to get that set really nicely. Um, talk about neighborhood association meetings um, and, and how to partake in them to get feedback and to get approval. 
Um, also, what's really amazing about RAC is built into their grant program, or sorry, built into mural program is a grant uh, opportunity. Um, and that can get funding for folks, not just for all the materials, but I mean, for your labor too, and get, and get paid pretty handsomely. Um, and then the city has their own permitting process, which can be pretty easy, except you have to pay for it, but it's like, what it makes sense to just go through rack because not only can, do you not have to pay for the permit, you can actually get funded pretty well for it. And then there's some also other really cool opportunities out there as well. There's an organization who, um, I've partnered with uh, several times. It's actually how I kind of started Street Ed program. And we kind of work in conjunction with each other at points uh, called the um, Portland Street Art Alliance, PSAA. And they get opportunities to a lot of emerging artists as well. And so sometimes they'll direct them that way. Um, and so that's like some of the accessibility is kind of breaking down some of these, what might seem like barriers to folks of like, how, where do I even start? You know, so it'll be, you know, how can you imagine starting a conversation with a, a, a local business or a building that has a blank wall and you would love to see art on it? Um, how would you approach that? And then from there, it's like it, it's we talk about the, the the sort of more formal side of like, what do you need to apply for? You know, what are the materials that you can need? All these things. And then on top of it, too, like thinking about it as like a public voice as well. You know, I think that's an important thing to think about what communities are you maybe contributing towards and maybe even trying to incorporate within the work and think about elevating or centering, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then even down to just like technical stuff, both with the Street Ed program and PNCA, uh, you know, a medium that is incredible to work with that can really expedite your process is spray paint. Plus, it's just an extremely fun medium to work with. And there's like a taboo for one that exists and maybe not so much in Portland these days, but I mean, still a lot of people equate it with graffiti, which equate it with vandalism. Um, but it's such a fantastic medium to work with. And I mean, you can cover a wall within like a matter of, you know, minutes or, or an hour with, with some spray paint. So I'll work, do all these workshops with students to teach them more of these large scale painting methods. Plus I do a lot of mentorships too, especially with the street ed program, connecting them with successful uh, muralists from around Portland to work directly with the artists and kind of have them learn some techniques from them as well. So I try my best to cover all the bases as possible with them so that, I mean, and honestly, I just, yesterday, I just received an email. Well, I think I probably received the email earlier, like late last week, but I finally got to the email yesterday with a student who had taken the uh, murals program, uh, the mural painting program at PNCA back in the spring. And they were like, Hey, I mean, I just wanted to let you know how, um, how much that, uh, you know, really in, in affected me a lot and I already had gone out and done another mural, um, since then and showed it to me and it was like, fantastic. I have a couple of students who are just are unstoppable now. They just keep getting murals. Like, you know, I feel like every other month right now and they, and the very first mural that they ever done was created with the PNC mural class. So I feel like it's been really helpful to like open up the possibilities for people and understand like how, how the class is just all about empowering them and uh, empowering students to know that um, it's really not that difficult. It's uh, just knowing the right way to approach folks to get the artwork out there and innovate some techniques. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's great that you're talking about breaking down the barriers for the education side and just learning about the practice and also the the paperwork that gets involved along with it as well, or sometimes not. Um, and we'd love to know, if, is there like a specific mural that comes to mind or projects that people can go around and actually see in Portland right now that you could share? Yeah, of course. Well, let's see. One that I was... Uh, Okay, so one that I think I'm, I feel is a really good example of like it being steeped in community engagement um, and outreach was uh, one that I did with the Street Ed program, uh, not last summer, but the summer before with Ethos Music School, which is on the corner of Killingsworth and Williams. So you're heading north on Williams and it, and it kind of T-bones t into... Killingsworth and right as you reach the light up there on the left I mean you can't miss it it's like over 60 feet wide and 20 feet tall and uh, I had been working with uh, a, a class of students 
it was all between 20 or 30 students starting in the in February of that year. And we worked, uh, you know, virtually and then we started meeting in person and then we give the opportunity for folks that were really interested afterwards to um, get involved with the community based mural. It was with Ethos Music School was interested to get a, a mural and have it be painted a lot, collaborated with youth. So we had eight students who were really interested and we brought them out and um, brought a couple of other artists from around the area. Actually, another PNCA alum, uh, Molly Mendoza. Um, who's like, uh, just like on, yeah, unbelievable artist. I mean, Molly is unstoppable with, um, their, all of their illustration of their, their books for, for youth. Um, I mean, yeah, their art is incredible for sure. Um, they do a lot of community-based murals around the city. So I brought in Molly and then another local artist, Jedi Levy. He did a lot of work, especially during um, a lot of the 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 the, um, the racial justice protests that, that came up over the last couple of years. He was leading a lot. Yeah, thank you so much for giving that link. Um, he was leading a lot of the uh, the organize the organizing and a lot of the the protests are happening. He happened to be a really great street artist, and so he came out as well. He's really skilled with uh, spray paint cans. And so the three of us worked with these students and then we met with like, don't shoot PDX a bunch to like talk about how we can incorporate the history of the Albina district, especially because it's a music school for youth. The Albina district used to be like just lush with the jazz music scene, you know, after the flood of Vanport in 1948 and dislocated a large part of the black community to the Albina district. Um, there was just like a, a, a blossoming of like an incredibly culturally rich music scene there. So we thought we would incorporate the, a lot of that into murals. So we got to meet with some local musicians who are a bit older and experienced and just had such an amazing experience for a couple of months of doing all sorts of outreach and, and information gathering. And then we put together the artwork and Molly, Jedi, and myself worked alongside the, uh, they're all high school students um, and got to pay them really well. Um, and, uh, worked with rack to get the permitting and everything. And that, that mural is just, I feel like we're all so incredibly proud of it. I think it was like a really good example of what, like a, a true, like truly community engaged, uh, project can be. And then I think of my own personal work that, um, I'm really proud of is on national university of natural medicine and UNM, um, it faces the highway, I guess, as you get on, I think it's 405, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It's probably about 60 or so feet wide, and it gets up to one point, I think is almost 40 feet tall. And it's uh it it, it faces a medicinal, a medicinal uh plant garden. And so in the mural are a dozen different types of medicinal plants you would find in the garden and kind of just like you know, blowing them up and elevating them to this point where like passersby in the hundreds, you know, could see them uh, blown up with a, with a person who's just kind of laying amongst them, just kind of like, you know, engaged in wonderment at like this gigantic chamomile and their flower in their hand. Um, and I just, and it's fun too, because it's on a historic brick, which is like a big no-no too. It's another thing murals can't do in this city. You can't paint on historic brick, but the school felt so, they were so supportive of the work. They were like, we'll give up standing for this building to have this mural here. So I let the background still be the brick and then it's all the plants growing on top of it. So I feel like a lot of it is about reclaiming it. And one fun story about it, which I think really speaks to like the community engagement is I spent a lot of time talking with the master gardener who oversaw the, who oversaw the, uh, who oversees the plot right there. And she was saying how one time, um, like the, the, the people who are like the donors or the investors in the school one time came out and they were like, oh, there's all these weeds everywhere. You got to pull them out. And there were dandelions. We're actually like dandelions are not just beautiful flowers, but I mean like heavily medicinal and, and important for um, for uh, the nurturing the soil. And she was like, it, it, she said it was like heartbreaking that they were like having her remove them. And so I ended up, this wasn't in the mural, the dandelions. And then when she told me that the next day, I painted them and she came in and she was like, Oh, there's dandelions. And I was like, yeah, they're for you. And she just like welled up with tears. And it was like, it was really cool to like, see that there was like this imprint that really meant a lot to the people who were 
and caretaking that that place. So those are two you know I'm extremely proud of. That's fantastic. And Dan Alliance is just making me think of like my own childhood and everything where you see them and you pick them up along the way. Yeah. And like dandelion salad and all the like great uh, ways you can use it for edible properties mm-hmm. as well. And thank you so much for highlighting some of the works both you have done and the community groups that you have as well. And you've just been so passionate about talking about it, which is fantastic. Um, but if you had to pick out, is, has there been like one part or not even just one part, but a section of the work that you've been doing as an instructor, particularly that makes you excited to keep doing it? Yeah. Like at PNCA especially? Yeah, in the CE and the foundations work specifically. Yeah. Um, color theory class has really been something that I've watched open the eyes of a lot of students. I have just had... um just uh, an, an, an inspiring amount of emails that have come back, back to me after these, after the class, during the classes said, I was just expecting to learn about color theory. I didn't realize how much this was going to impact my overall art practice. Um, and, uh, and I really took, take a lot of pride in that class. I really spent so much time researching as much as I could beyond the sort of like standard texts that get used that are just really been generalized over the years of the last like half decade to almost, I mean, half decade, sorry, half century, if not like whole century, like coming from like the Bauhaus school and stuff, kind of departing from that and seeing more like contemporary uses of it. Um, and it's been fun because now that I'm teaching this 2 di- 2D design course, color theory is a part of it. And I've looked at the textbook that we use and I'm like, this is actually, to me, fairly outdated. And I've been able to like give all these updates to the curriculum and I've watched students adapt to it so quickly and been like, I had no idea (laughs) and watch their art. Like I had one student be like, I'm not in, I don't paint that much, but working with colors in this way, being able to handle colors, like thinking about paint, not as this medium of something that might be difficult for people, but seeing as color that they can have in their hands and manipulate and just being coming really excited about it and seeing work that they're like, my grandparents are the ones that have helped me go to school here. And I, I can't wait to show them this painting because it's like, I didn't think I was going to make anything here that they would care about. And now I've made something that I can see. Like I literally just had that last week. A student tell me that. And they're like, I'm really just kind of into photography. Never thought I would ever enjoy painting. Like that, that kind of stuff, I think, is just what makes me be, feel like t- being a teacher is is just so much a part of my life and meaningful and actually gives me like so much. Uh, it's like I can't avoid it. Like, that's what I have to do in my life. You know, <laughs> that's kind of how it feels. That's absolutely incredible. And I think it makes sense that having something, you know, as basic as it's come to be known as color theory be so tangible and have great connections come out of it and building its own community almost at the same time is just great to hear that is being developed at PNCA specifically. Yeah. And speaking of community cultivation, we had a quick question come in, uh, Justine, if you don't mind, of how do you foster connections with both uh, within the class and with all the other folks that are in the building as they get involved with PNCA? Yeah, um, I can definitely speak about that from kind of a perspective student's um, perspective, like students coming into PNCA. Um, At least in my role in in admissions, um, we do so much more than just the application. We run events. We do virtual info sessions where we talk about our careers that you can have. (laughs) Um, Not only just from the perspective of our own alumni, but just so that students are more aware of all the possibilities within a creative career. Um, We teach portfolio tips and tricks. I run workshops with students. Our whole team does that. Everyone on our team is an artist. Um, many of whom, you know, have graduated from PNCA. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, like being on campus every day and like working with students that are coming to PNCA, but also interacting with the community here is so important to me. Um, I'm, uh, 
for instance, I'm like hoping to be a midterm reviewer. <laughs> um, that's an exciting process that um, I'd love to be involved in that with, you know, current students who are going through their thesis uh, experience and then having someone, you know, and the outside kind of look in on their project and offer them guidance and feedback, um, which is something I do with portfolio reviewing all the time with students. Um, but I, I go very deep in my job with connecting students to resources outside of PNCA too. Um, Portland just has such a great thriving art scene and a lot of support for artists. Um, Adam mentioned RAC. Um, I talk to students a lot about looking um, through all of their like services and grant opportunities that they offer, you know, residents here. Um, everything from RAC to all the resources with local arts organizations, Oregon Contemporary, PICA, like there's so many ways for students to get involved just in the, in the art scene. And then beyond that kind of um, bringing students um, into the Portland Art Museum, you know, we're hoping to do one of those trips again this summer where we lead students through a section of the museum and kind of talk about how it relates to their own practice and kind of preparing them for what they'll be doing when they're at PNCA for the next four years. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, every day I'm on campus, um, not only am I getting to see like really amazing art from students and interact with that, but I could talk from, to staff from all different departments and kind of joke about the day in day out things and um, talk about our art practices, chat with professors, some of whom, you know, were my professors when I was a student, which is really cool and to see them like not only thriving in the university, but just out in the art community in general. I mean, um, I talk to students about this a lot, but when you're thinking about a school that you want to go to, um, it's not just where the school is situated, like the building itself and the inner community. It's about the web that that community creates. That is really one of the most important aspects of going to a school and what you're really getting out of that experience. And PNCA's web throughout Portland and just this whole Pacific Northwest region is um, really incredible. And there's so many ways for students to get connected um, beyond just, just school. So I always love talking to students about all the many ways beyond PNCA that they can, they can get in touch with the art community here. I, I absolutely love that. I mean, communities, if not always are about networking to some degree and making lasting relationships that are going to span more than a couple of decades likely or not. And it's cool to hear that you and I'm sure Adam as well, seeing some former professors, now colleagues, as you're working at the institution, it's just great to hear how interwoven everyone is both within the school and in the external community of Portland as well. And of course, shout out to Regional Arts and Culture Council. They've done such great work and they're continuing to do such great work as the school is involved and how the arts community of Portland is involved. So uh, we're going to transition into our one of our final question sections for this evening that is open to both you and Adam, Justine. Um, and the first of it is going to be, you know, in reviewing your career arcs so far, are there any themes or touch points you want to share for this evening? And you can decide who would like to go first in this process. you want to go first, Adam? <laughs> that's a big, that's a great and big question. Yeah. So that was themes in our, did you say in our professional practice or? Overall career arcs, which would include professional pr practice or what you're doing currently at the college or other areas as well. Yeah. Um, I'm, you would like me to go first though, you <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you want to, I want to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I think I can. I think I can. Um, you know, something that I started, uh, something that I've thought about a lot over the last, um, I don't know, uh, I guess I'm going to have to say like pandemic kind of gave the time to, you know, uh, distill some of these ideas down because I've spent so much time in the public, you know, making uh, artwork 
and I do have a studio practice and I felt like what I was doing in the public realm, I would sometimes take on work that felt pretty like socially and culturally important to me. And then I came back to the studio and I was like, well, what do I make now um, that I have a lot more time over the last couple of years? And I started understanding that like at my professional practice kind of has like this duality of voices. I kind of almost like have this outside voice and this inside voice. And I started trying to develop that. And, you know, I have uh, an autoimmune disease that um, is just unshakable and, and it's like ruined so much of my life. And it's also like, has a silver lining that has really sort of like empowered me to take my health in my own hands. And um, so I started making a lot of work in recent years from there. And because I'm so influenced by making work in regard, in conjunction, in collaboration, uh, in spirit with other communities, I started thinking about, well, there's a lot of other folks I know are just like me, whether they have autoimmune diseases, whether they have an invisible illness, uh, whether they're just struggling with something with their health. Um, and so I started thinking about how I get to make work about something that is so deeply embedded in my life, restricts me from a lot of things, but I said has a silver lining that has kind of empowered me in certain ways and how I can express that and try to find a side that um, can somehow celebrate it while still reconciling how sad it can be and you know how limiting it can be as well. Um, and so actually another shout out to Rack, they had given me a, um, a pretty amazing, uh, you know, they have, oh my God, this thing, I want to say it's one of their three C grants mm -hmm. had been able to fund a project for me to make a body of work about dealing with, um, with, with an autoimmune disease that's, that's invisible. Um, and actually, you know, and of course I'm very inspired by, uh, color within this work, especially all the studies that I've done and knowing how much color can affect mood and express emotion and everything. Um, so for the last year or so, um, I've been making work about that. And, you know, I, I, and, and I guess I, like what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that even though this is something that's deeply personal to me, I'm finding that it still has a lot of relationship to thinking about it in a larger scheme of, of, the, of certain communities of like my peoples that I can kind of feel that it may resonate with. And I'm still kind of maybe uh, in, almost in conjunction with. So whether that's been making work out in the streets and the public, whether that's my pedagogical practice, I mean, even in the classroom too, I'm constantly telling students like, I'm, I'm a teacher, but I'm a student forever too, you know, and y'all too are, we can learn from each other. And so I feel like I'm just constantly thinking about how, how rich a practice can be, a professional practice can be in any which way that is done in conjunction with community. That's great to hear. Justine, anything you'd like to share as well? Yeah, um, some similar uh, thoughts with that. My um, kind of themes in my professional and like artistic practice of pretty consistently been about collaboration. Um, you know, I uh, I started this secret poetry picture and a prompt is what it's called, a poem, a picture, a prompt, um, mailing that I'll do to anyone who wants to get on this list. I don't expect anything in return. I just make these packages that are really mysterious there's a poem in there, there is a picture of some kind, and there's a prompt, usually it's along the lines of a writing prompt. And the idea is that these things are all interchangeable. And it's about sharing these bits and pieces of um, kind of whatever esoteric meanderings I have going on that um, I just send out. Sometimes I get really interesting things back in response to that or something totally different. And then it starts this whole dialogue with this person. And I'm not having like, you know, we're not writing letters. We are sending ephemera and like coded information to each other. And that like that's a that collaborative process um, has always been so interesting to me with well, not just other artists, really anyone. Um, and then a lot of other projects I've done as an artist, whether it be in the performance dance community or within um, 
book arts and um, publication, it's always been a collaborative process with other writers, other artists, other poets. Um, I was told today by one of my colleagues that Vicky now, um, an incredible poet who um, has uh, done a workshop um, with the MFA creative writing students, the Little Res students, that she said something along the lines of, um, I do my best work like with others, like my best work comes from that um, partnering with other writers. Um, and I a hundred percent agree with that. Like even for myself, I mean, yes, I make work that stands alone and, you know, in my own like profession as an admissions counselor, there's a lot of like solo work that we do. You know, we go out into the community. If no one's familiar with a lot of what we do is traveling to different locations around the United States to on our own, to go to art classrooms and meet with students. And you do a lot of that, but um, it always comes back to that team and that collaborative effort that really brings it all together. And not only for me personally makes all of this so worthwhile, but um, just makes the work better. The work in all ways of life, you know. That's fantastic. My, my two cents. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, you you both have such a unique way with connecting with your communities and so on uh, in how you've covered for this evening. I'd like to offer up to you both um, that you have any final thoughts before we close? This has been such a deep and meaningful conversation about your com creative community and creating community with connections as well. So I just want to turn it over to you both if there's anything else you'd like to mention before we close things up. I mean, that last, the last quote that you shared was very powerful. I mean, it's, it's totally true. Like, I mean, even as, even as a musician, you know, sometimes I play solo and sometimes I, and I, and I play in bands and I find the best, the best stuff that I create is always in bands, which is, is a, a collaboration, you know, it's a collaboration with three, four other folks. And, uh, and it's just always, there's a magic that happens between people, you know, it just becomes exponential so that, yeah, that really hits. And I can't, can't, uh, resonate that resonates so much. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think you could sum it up by saying your people are your power and um, yeah. lean into that and lean into each other. I love it. Great yeah. way to close. I agree. All right. Thank you all for joining us this evening and participating in this very productive and creative conversation. We cannot be prouder of our alumni, our faculty, staff, and other members of the PNCA community, and those of you online as well. We appreciate you all helping us move the school forward in such innovative and exciting ways. Thank you all again and have a great night.